my name is David Atherton and I was the winner of the Great British Bake Off. Today we're going to be making a delicious recipe from my new book, my first cookbook, uh, which has been beautifully illustrated by Rachel Stubbs, who's one of my best friends. I still remember my first cookbook. I used to take it in turns to choose a recipe with my twin brother, and I still actually get excited about making new recipes today. This book is full of all kinds of amazing food that you can do together. It's split into four sections and it covers breakfast, lunches, dinners, and it definitely has lots of tasty treats and snacks as well. I hope this book inspires you to tie on your apron, dance around the kitchen a bit, and make some amazing food. Today, we're gonna to be making snaky breadsticks, and they're from the lunches and simple suppers section of the book. Okay, this is bread, so it takes time, so let's get started. Okay, for this recipe, you are gonna need 300 grams of plain flour, two teaspoons of salt, two teaspoons of sweet paprika, two teaspoons of fast action yeast, a medium carrot, 70 mils of milk, 100 mils of warm water, then you're gonna need some coarse polenta or cornmeal and some poppy seeds to decorate, 16 currants, and we're missing something. Oh yeah, a red pepper. Okay, we're gonna start off by putting our flour into a bowl, a mixing bowl. We're gonna add the salt, so two teaspoons of salt. Two teaspoons of paprika. This gives it a nice color and a bit of a flavor. It's not a very strong flavor. And two teaspoons of the fast action yeast. This makes the bread rise. Okay, just give that a little bit of a mix. And now we need to get our wet ingredients. So that's our dry ones. Now for our wet ones, we are going to put we're gonna grate a medium carrot. So carrots come in all different sizes, but it should be okay. If it's a little bit smaller, a little bit, big, a little bit bigger, probably go more to the smaller one if you're worried. And then we're gonna finely grate this carrot. So the different sizes of the grater, and we're gonna go for the really thin ones. You don't want it to be big chunks inside your bread. You just want it to be little thin strips, basically. Okay, that's enough. So the carrot adds a bit of color. It makes it really moist as well. We're now gonna add some milk and our warm water. And we're gonna mix the wet now in with the dry. Now I'm just gonna mix this together we're not trying to get it to be a nice bread dough at the moment, we're just mixing so the liquid gets soaked up by the flour. And then when it comes together just to being a very basic dough, we're gonna leave it to rest for 10 minutes. And that just means that the water can be absorbed by all the starch grains in the flour. I'm just gonna go with my hands now. So it's just a basic dough, and we're just gonna leave that covered for 10 minutes. Okay, next bit, my favorite bit, is kneading. So, I'm gonna take the dough, we're just gonna put it on a lightly floured surface. We don't want to add lots of flour at this stage because it'll make them dry. So even if it goes sticky, you just gotta keep on going. And we're just gonna knead it. I mean, you can kind of knead it for as long as you want. The minimum you should do is just for like a minute, but you can knead longer. This can be quite a fun thing. You can knead in lots of different ways. Some people knead with two hands like this. Some people knead with one hand. Some people like to just slap it around. Uh, but really, it's just about pushing it around all over the place. See if you can get really quick kneading as well like this. You can do less time if you go quick. And you should notice that it starts looking like a bread dough. So already it's starting to look softer and stretchy. So, this is now ready, so I'm just gonna make it into a ball. See, it's a little bit sticky, but that's fine. It's gonna be nice and soft. And we're just gonna put this back in the bowl. And we're gonna take a slightly damp tea towel, I've already made this a little bit damp, and we're gonna put this on top, and we're gonna leave this till it gets double in size. That's the important bit. Now, if you can leave it in a warm place, that'll make it go quicker. There's no time here, you can't say leave it for an hour, because it depends, yeast works from warmth. So if this is a really warm room, it's gonna go rise very quickly. 
Okay, let's get rolling. So, my bread's double in size now. So we're just gonna take it out. Some dough. We're gonna knock the air out of it. And then we're gonna split it up into eight pieces. They don't have to be exact, this isn't a science. Just put the flour there. So that's half. Half again. Half again. Basically, always doing things in half. Mm, I can smell the paprika. So, this bit now, you're gonna take just a little bit of flour, you're gonna take your bread, and we're gonna roll it out into a sausage. Now this, usually it's best to start with your hands in the middle, and then go out towards the edges. And it takes time, one, tip is to go so far like this and then wait, let it relax because bread's like elastic, it becomes very tense. So if we do that now and I start on a new one, that one's going to be relaxing a little bit and it's going to be easier to roll. Now you want to get them nice and thin because when they go in the oven they're going to rise more. So you want to do it thinner than how you want your, your final snakes to be. Snakes actually come in all different types and sizes. So you can choose to do whatever kind of snake you want. You can do really long, thin ones. You could do some fatter ones. You could do some that maybe have big fat heads, like a viper. Now, we these are already looking a little bit snake-like, um, or worm-like. We're gonna make them look more snake-like, and to do that, we're going to give them a little bit of protein. So here I've got some cornmeal, which is made from, it's a coarse cornmeal, made from ground up dried corn. You can also use polenta, which actually is, comes from wheat. And then also some poppy seeds. So I'm just gonna sprinkle this onto the plate. Like so. I'm gonna roll my snakes in it. So you can choose how much you want to cook them out. But these gonna give the breadsticks the snakes a nice crunchy feel to them. And once you've done that, you want to put them onto a baking tray with paper. And now this is a fun bit as well, deciding how you want your snakes to be. I'm just gonna switch my oven on as well, preheat my oven to 160 degrees. Some ovens I need to ask whoever normally uses the oven, because some ovens take a long time to heat up, some of them go really quick. Right, it's one set. You kind of need two baking trays for this, because you want to give them enough room for you to be able to do nice shapes. Still, they don't look quite enough like snakes for me yet, so I'm also going to add two more little things. I'm going to add some eyes and a tongue. To do the eyes and the tongue, we're just gonna use little currants for the eyes, and we're gonna use a small amount of red pepper, just to do a little tongue. And you might need some help to make this, to do the fiddly bits of cutting, or you might be good at doing it yourself. So you just wanna cut a mouth, and put in the tongue. And I get two currants. And you really want to press these in hard actually because the bread's gonna rise a little bit and otherwise they'll be pushed out. Oh, these look great. Now we're gonna leave them for 10 minutes, then we're gonna bake them for eight to 10 minutes. But when you bake them, you can do them longer if you want to. The longer you put them in, the crispier they get. So you can do 10 minutes or you could even do 20 minutes if you want to. Okay, here they are out of the oven. So many lovely shapes. Okay. Mmm, they're really good. A really nice crunch from the corn and the poppy seeds. Mm. And tastes so good. These will be great dipped into a soup, like a tomato soup, or squished on with some sauce. I hope you've enjoyed making sneaky breadsticks with me. Uh, there are loads more amazing recipes in my new book, My First Cookbook. So buy it and have a go.